So this is lesson 6.4.2, using integrals to find area. So the question, essential question is, how can I use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find area? Quick review. How do we use a fundamental theorem of calculus to find the answer to that integral? All right. As a reminder, second fundamental theorem of calculus said you find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of x squared would be one third x cubed, right? Because the three would come down taking the derivative to get rid of that, and then you drop by one. So that's the antiderivative. And then you just plug in your a and your b and subtract. The way we show that is with this little symbol saying we evaluate it from two to five, which means you plug the five into there and I'd get one third times five cubed. And then I subtract what I get when I plug the two into there. One third, two cubed. Let's see, that would be 125 thirds minus eight thirds which is 117 thirds. So that is the value of this integration, that integral. Uh, you hopefully remember what that means. So what does that number mean? Well, if this is the equation for the line y equals x squared, which it certainly looks like, and I meant to write that in there earlier, then this integral is just the area under the curve starting at two and ending at five between the curve and the x-axis. So this area is equal to 117 thirds. Integrals find area. All right. Well then, what if I wanted to find the total area of the curve y equals x squared minus 9 between 3 and negative 3, or between negative 3 and 3? Well, we might just think, find the integral. So let's try that and see what happens. We're going to find the integral from negative 3 to 3 of x squared minus 9 dx. Because integrals find area. Let's see here, antiderivative of x, cu x squared would be one third x cubed minus integral of nine would be, uh, the antiderivative of nine would be nine x. There's my antiderivative. When we evaluate it from negative three to three, which means I'm gonna plug in a three, I'm gonna plug in a negative three, I'm gonna subtract. So let's do that. Let's see here, plugging a three, I'd have one third, three cubed minus nine times three. And then minus plugging in negative three, I'm gonna have one third negative three cubed minus nine times negative three. All right, three cubed is 27, a third of 27 is nine. So that'd be nine minus nine times three is 27 minus, that's gonna be negative 20, that'd be negative nine minus or plus 27. Nine minus 27 is a negative 18 minus negative nine plus 27 is 18. Negative 18 minus 18 more is negative 36, which is an awfully weird number for area. Right, let's look at the graph of this thing. The graph of x squared minus nine looks like this. It's got a y-intercept of negative nine. It's gonna cross the x-axis here at negative three, and there at three. When I calculated the integral you got to remember, I've talked about this pretty carefully in the past. When you do integrals, the value of an integral can be negative for any area underneath the x-axis, right? This, in, this integral right here, it's going to find that area, but the value it's going to give it is going to be negative, 
right? So the value I get out for that integral is a negative 36. Area is a positive number. So if any time you are being asked to find total area, we can totally still use the integration technique that we learned right there. It's just that when we get to our final answer of negative 36, you're like, oh yeah, area can't be negative. Area is a positive number that has an area of 36 square units, right? Um, that negative 36, it kind of speaks to the difference between speed and velocity. We've talked about this before. Velocity can be negative, right? A negative velocity means you're moving backward. A positive velocity means you're moving forward, right? But speed, speed is just a speed. You can't, there's, there's no negative speed. Same thing here. An integral can be negative, right? Which can give certain meanings to the function. And we're going to talk about that later. But when we're talking about the area, well, area is a positive number. So area would just be the absolute value of that integral. So area, the total area under there would be a positive 36. That would be my answer for area. So there is a different question when, there, when it says find the total area versus find the value of the integral, right? Two different questions I could ask here. Question one, find the value of the integral from negative three to three of x squared minus nine dx. That would be equal to negative 36. However, this question said, find the total area between the curve and the x-axis. That area is a positive 36 because area is always a positive number. All right, uh, last type of one would be one like this. Find the total area, so that's an area one again, between the curve y equals square root of x minus two and the x-axis over the interval in zero to nine. All right, well, that means it's asking me for the total area um, there, there. Now, I am not, going to want to find this by doing the integral from zero to nine, the square root of x minus two dx. Take a moment, look at it for a moment to see if you can figure out why this would not be a good way of finding total area. All right, well, if we remember right, the value of this with an integral would be negative. Let's just make it up a number. Let's say that's negative 10. And the value of this integral would be positive. We'll make up a number for that again. Let's say that's a little bit bigger. Let's say it's a value of 11. Well, if that was the case, the total value of this integral would be negative 10 plus 11, which would be one, but that's not the area, right? I wanna consider this part positive. And so the way I'd have to solve this one, if the question was to ask for total area, I'm gonna to have to find these areas separately. I'm gonna to have to say, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to look at this area in red, and I'm gonna find that integral. I know when I find that integral, I'm gonna have some negative number out. I don't know that'll be 10, but I know it's gonna be a negative number because it's below the x-axis. And then I can find this area separately, and that'll be some positive number. And then I'll have the area of both of those and I can add them together. So let's start with the one in red. That would be the integral from zero to four of square root of x minus two. Uh, we're here again, when we're talking about calculus, we've talked about this before, that square root function, it can be totally helpful, but in calculus, it's kind of a pain. So if I were to do this, I would probably just rewrite this integral. Zero to four, instead of square root of x, I'd write that as x to the one half. Because, the, because then finding the antiderivative is a lot easier. Antiderivative of x to the one half, so that's gonna be one higher power, so x to the three halves, but I'm gonna to have to have a two thirds out here to counteract that three halves. Minus antiderivative of two would be two x. I'm gonna evaluate this from a zero to a four, which means you plug a four in, plug a zero in, and you subtract. You could plug a four into there with a calculator, but that's not bad. So just a reminder, if I had four to the three halves, that's the exact same thing as 
the square root of four all to the third. If you're not sure about why that is. Um, four to the three halves, I can rewrite as four to the one half all to the third power, right? Because multiplying exponents, that'd be three halves. Four to the one half, that's just like square root. So it's square root of four all to the third. I can do that. Square root of four is two. Two to the third is eight. So this is equal to eight. So when I plug a four into there, I'll have two thirds times eight. Two thirds times eight is 16 thirds. Minus plugging a four into this part, that's easy. Four times two is eight. That's the first part. Minus plug a zero into both of those. That's really easy. Plugging a zero into each of those is zero. So then I got 16 thirds minus eight, which would be the same as 16 thirds minus 24 thirds. 16 minus 24 is eight. So that'd be negative eight thirds, which shouldn't be too surprising that it's negative. I expected a negative answer out because this is below the x-axis. I didn't get a negative an answer out. I feel kind of wor worried about that. But since I got a negative eight thirds out, I know this area right there is so equal to eight thirds. Do it again for the one in green, and we'll have our total area in green. That would be the integral starting at four and ending at nine. So from four to nine. Uh, I, I'm just going to rewrite this right now. Instead of square root of x, I'm going to write it as x to the one half minus two. This is going to be very similar. because It's the same equation, right? So antiderivative of x to the one half is two thirds x to the three halves minus antiderivative of two is two x. I'm going to evaluate this from four to nine, which means you plug a nine in there. Let's see here, if I plug a nine in, that'll be 27 times two, 54 thirds minus 18. Minus plugging a four in, we already did that one. We know that one, that's gonna be 16 thirds minus eight. That's kind of annoying to do. We can, um, I might recommend doing that with a calculator just to make it a life easier, but we can do this, this wouldn't be bad. It'll be 54 thirds minus, let's see here, times by three, 54 thirds. Oh, look at that. Minus 16 thirds minus 24 thirds. That'd be zero minus a negative eight thirds, which is eight thirds. Who would have thought? The area there is the exact same. That's crazy. Area there is also eight thirds. All right, well, if I want the total area, I've got an area of eight thirds on the left-hand side, an area of eight thirds on the right-hand side. So my total area is eight thirds plus eight thirds. It is 16 thirds. That's how it's done. Find the area under a curve, just pay close attention to whether that area between the curve and the x-axis is above the x-axis or below the x-axis. Got a few problems to try that on right here. Give it some practice, give it a try. If any of them seem weird, stop by my office out. I'm always more than happy to help you out. See you guys later.